There are some businesses I wished I'd created. Sendal is one of them. It's disruptive, fun to use, and it solves a painful problem us small business owners have. Today we meet founder James Chin Moody, who tells us how he's done it. It's episode 459 of the award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Show, thanks to Authentic Education, Yellow, and American Express. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show, a successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to your weekly dose of marketing silliness. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner, ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. Today's episode 459 is made possible thanks to digital marketing agency Yellow, Amex Business Cards, which are designed for business owners like you, and Marketing Educators Authentic Education, and a little bit more on what they've got in store for you later. Big show today. I embarrass myself as I fanboy it out with ex-New Inventors judge and now Sendal founder, James Chin Moody. Did you watch The New Inventors? That was a great TV show. We have a lull thanks to listener Diane Williams and another listener shares what marketing is working for them and wins over a thousand bucks worth of prizes in this week's Monster Prize draw. As per usual team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Let's start with a bit of a lull before we go and meet today's special guest. I received this funny email from listener Diane Williams, who looks to be on the Sunshine Coast, where I live. Love that. She's got the Sunshine Coast outdoor paintball business. Hmm, There you go. She says, hey, Timbo. Hey, Diane. Have been binging on your podcast. I actually don't have a question at the moment. Too busy bullet pointing all the great ideas I've been listening to. Well, that's good news. hope you're implementing them. But I have a tip for your small business big marketing tribe. You see, my son was listening in on one of your episodes while we were in the car, and he said, Mum, why is the guy talking so fast? And I said, I don't know. I think it's because everyone has so much great info, but limited time to listen, that he puts it on high speed. (laughs) No, that's not what I do. Diane then says, after about two weeks, I realized I had my phone speed at one and a half times normal speed. Ha ha, she says. When I turned it to one times, you sounded so much more laid back and Aussie, Timbo. But there's the tip for your crew. More information in little time. Thanks for some great info and love listening to your show. P.S. Word of mouth is definitely my number one marketing. Good on you, Diane. Well, what we might do going forward, I hadn't thought of this, that we could kind of speed up the pace of this show to the point where I'm talking like at such a fast pace and giving you so much information that I'm going to sound like this. Or maybe that's not a great idea. Maybe I just need to go back to sounding like this. Much more relaxed, much more comfortable. And, you know, why rush? All righty, in a much more laid-back manner, let's meet today's special guest. For the past couple of decades, Sendal founder James Chin Moody has had an impressive career in anything but small business, working for the United Nations, the CSIRO, even the Australian Bureau of Statistics. For eight years, he was actually the judge on ABC TV's The New Inventors Show, which I absolutely loved, I've got to tell you. Did you used to watch it? Then finally, just a few short years ago, James saw the light and he started a micro business that would soon become Sendal, which for those who don't know Sendal, and you should, it's Ace. It's an online based parcel delivery service that is taking on the monopolistic Goliath that is Australia Post. Now, Sendal has already been voted Australia's best courier service two years in a row and employs over 100 staff and has experienced, as this, 40 months straight growth of 15%. Awesome. Love success stories like this. Now, full disclosure, I love Sendal. I have no financial interest in it, but I love it. I love what it stands for, what it does, 
its user interface, the fact that it's hugely reduced the price of sending a parcel to anywhere in the world, including Base Camp Everest, as you're about to find out, and the time it takes to do that, and the fact that it's disrupting a staid old industry and a staid old business in Aussie Post. So please excuse my embarrassing fanboyishness that I display throughout this chat, because I do love Sendall. I started off by asking James, as a judge on the new inventors, did he used to sit there thinking, geez, I'd love to invent something I could call my own? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, 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 so I, did, I was a judge on there for about eight years, and I must say it was one of my the favourite things that I got to do um, because you, you just got to see uh, inventive Australians seeing a problem and then finding a solution to that. And I must say, yeah, I was, you know, I'm, I was, and I still am in complete awe of folk who can do that, you know, create mm-hmm. something out of nothing, um, particularly ones who, you know, see something that no one else saw. And that's really what the new inventors was about. It was actually, you know, celebrating those folk who could who could see things that were in plain sight. I, I I think it's part of the reason I do this show. I, I'm just in awe of small business owners generally. Uh, ones that disrupt um, state industries are particularly interesting in all these startups that are coming along. But I just think bit small business generally, and clearly you would share the same view, is that they're just full of courage and, and bravery. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it is, it's both the lifeblood of the economy, but it's also the folk who are willing to stand up and, you know, give it a crack. Uh, often, and, and I, I, you know, often it's standing up and finding out, you know, solutions that others might have missed. I actually think it's the folk who can move more quickly. Uh, that there's an old, there's a, there, oh, sorry, there's a new saying that it used to be that the big eat the slow. Sorry, it used to be the big eat the small. Now it's a matter of the fast eat the slow. <laughs> and that's where the real capability of small business is, at going more quickly than the big guys. And if you can do that, now you can take market share because you've got tools that you never had before, mm. whether it's you know marketing tools online, whether it's the ability to build businesses really quickly, whether it's technology. That's the capability of small business. It's, un- it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, the, the landscape, and I, I live in the marketing landscape, but I'm sure it applies to all the other parts of business, whether it be HR or IT or cash or you know, accounting. We, we can, we can us small business guys can act so much bigger than we used to and compete against businesses with much deeper pockets, which is what you're doing. Ah, indeed. And, and you know, it's, it's the, in fact, the small business owners who can integrate these services because you're not just, you know, in the old days, it used to be that you had to create everything from scratch. Now, if you want a billing service, you just go to a zero, hmm. you know, and bang, it's done. If you want a, you know, if you want to do marketing, well, you've got all these channels that never existed before yes. and you can do it really targeted and really micro, you know. I guess the point of Sendle was if you want shipping, now you can actually get shipping rates and you can, you know, that the big businesses get and you can get door-to-door delivery. You can have all those things and you don't need to do anything in order to make it happen. And have fun doing it. We'll come to that in a minute. Were, yep. were you looking to disrupt an industry as you were looking around? Because you spent <laughs> time as an employee for many years, whether it be of the ABC or the CSIRO, and you were very much an employee. Were you sort of looking around at industries to disrupt? Because that's what Branson does. Yeah, actually, that, funnily enough, you know, and, and my, my journey for Sendal really is a bit of an accidental journey, um, you might say, because we weren't looking to disrupt a, an industry or, any, or, you know, disrupt the national mo- postal monopoly in Australia. Um, in fact, I was, uh, it, it actually started off as uh, I was the looking after my two young kids. I was the primary carer. My wife had a, um, an executive role at an airline. Um, and uh, interestingly, so I was looking for something to do. And with a friend of mine, we actually started up a giving network. So I had, you know, a six-month-old and a two-year-old. I had, I was surrounded by baby clothes and baby <laughs> things. It's like, how can I find another life for these things? And so we actually just started this network of giving. Um, and the idea being that people, you know, a bag of baby clothes you can't sell, but folk are willing to, you know, they'll, they'll pay for the shipping if you're willing to give it away. Uh-huh. That was the original premise. And so he built this network. Um, it had about, it got about 50,000. It was much more successful than we thought it would be. It got about 50,000 people all giving stuff away. But what we suddenly realized was, hang on, we need a shipping solution for that. You know, they were driving across town. Mm-hmm. We actually needed to find a shipping solution that was, you know, we think of it as simple, reliable, and affordable. It would be really, really easy because if you make it any difficult in any way, people would stop giving. It was like we were competing with a rubbish bin. Mm-hmm. 
It had to be really reliable because, again, if you didn't, it was the receiver who, you know, you, uh, would, you'd, you'd basically start going, well, I'm not going to give away anymore. Um, and it had to be really affordable because the residual value in these things, you know, a bag of baby clothes or a secondhand pair of golf clubs is really not worth that much. Mm -hmm. And what we found is, though, that, you know, the existing solutions out there, nobody could do what we needed, which was, you know, door-to-door uh, -door delivery, really cheap rates and really, really simple. But then, and this is probably where the simple story began, what we found is that though there are all of these enterprise couriers, right? Mm -hmm. you, gen you, you, you might not know who they are, but there's lots of them out there that are just working for big business. And what we said is, well, hey, we've got 50,000 people who all want to send stuff from one person to another. You know, if we were to um, help them do all the customer support, do everything, would you give us, you know, your enterprise rates? And first one and then a second and then others because really Sendle said we were going to take full responsibility for getting that parcel there. Mm -hmm. And and really we found that they all had idle capacity that we could tap into. And so before we knew it and, you know, uh, time goes very quickly in startup land. This is – we're back to about 2014. Before we knew it, we'd actually built a national network for our own purposes and a national network <laughs> that uh, funnily enough was actually cheaper – cheaper to pick up a parcel from someone's house or their small business office than it was to line up at the post office. Wow. So, so that's – and Sendle's born. And that's – and then uh, funnily enough, that was how Sendle was born. We, well, it was actually born the moment um, that some of our – some of the members of that network, that giving network, actually started to use it for parcel delivery, not for giving. Uh, oh. They'd sell something on eBay – and then they'd pretend to give it away to the same person. <laughs> and, they would, and, and why were they doing that? Well, you know, it's still the case. If you want to send 10 kilograms from Sydney to Perth, you can line up at the post office and pay $45 oh, for that. I'd rather set Sendle, fire to my own we'll legs. Pick it up. Yeah, sorry? I'd rather set fire to my own legs. I know. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. You can, pay, you can line up and pay $45. bucks. we will pick it up from you and we'll send it to Perth for less than 20 Right? And so it's more than 50% off. For this exactly the same journey. And, and you don't think that, you know, the big guys, the Harvey Normans or the Amazons, are they paying $45 to send mm. a parcel to Perth? No, they're absolutely not. So, so just to be yeah. clear, so, so Sendal, I just want to get really clear on how Sendal works. So, so you, you own no trucks, number one, correct? We're, absolutely. We're a courier. We're absolutely a courier. But what we do is we, we basically unlock the capacity of others. Um, from a customer's perspective, from a small business perspective, you don't really care. You just want to get your parcel from A to B. We'll take full responsibility. We'll, one of our providers will pick it up from you. Um, they might transfer it to another provider and it will get delivered. But we'll do it cheaper than post and we actually have a price guarantee that our same city or national parcels are cheaper than post with free pickup and we're generally faster as well. What? Uh, how, how do you then, because you've got a 100% guarantee, how, how do you trust the reliability of all these different logistics and transport companies that you're partnering with? Do you have an agreement that, you know, what, 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 do, what must they deliver to you? Yeah, well, actually, um, if they, uh, it's interesting because we have such a big network. So we now have the biggest um, minimum of one pickup network in Australia. Um, we can now deliver to anywhere in the world. In fact, we can deliver a packet of Tim Tams anywhere in the world for less than 10 US dollars. Like that's base <laughs> that's camp awesome. Everest. We can do that. And we'll really? pick it, again, we'll pick it up for you from free. Um, what we do is but we can do that because we have so many suppliers now and we're choosing between them. What we do is we do the choice on quality of their network, mm -hmm. you know, not on price. When, you know, for us, the quality of the network is the most important thing. And so we like to think that we're actually picking out the best bits of all the enterprise couriers in Australia and making them available for small business so that we can level the playing field between small business and big business. Oh, there's got to be a TV ad in the fact that you can deliver a packet of Tim Tams for 10 bucks to the base camp of Everest. <laughs> have you, have, have you <laughs> done that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's, we, we think of it as, uh, you know, parcel to anywhere. And we can, for the same price, and it's like one of the other things we do is try to keep the pricing really simple. Yes. Because if you're, if you're a small business e-commerce provider, right, you don't have time to try to work out, you know, how much it's going to be. And you don't want to get caught out because somebody got a customer in Zimbabwe or Mongolia who wants your T-shirt 
that you've, you know, uh, that or your or your jewellery or whatever it might be. Um, you just needed everything to be simple. And so yeah. what we do is try to take that all that complexity away mm-hmm. and and make it easy. So you can work out: Do I want to charge a shipping? Do I want to do free shipping? What do I want to do? Well, with again, it's that that simple, reliable, and affordable. That's what small business needs for their parcel. The They're other just- thing too, I mean, you certain, you, you've certainly uh, very competitive price-wise against Australia Post, but the other thing you've done is you've just gone and identified all the pain points that were incurred with parcel delivery for the small business owner or for anyone really from standing in the post office to the pricing being completely mm. complicated to, you know, the, the, the myriad of options to everything really. And you've just gone and, gone and addressed them. And I sort of look at some businesses and there's probably many business owners listening now where if you are operating in a complicated industry, surely someone needs to take the simpl- simplified route and they're going to win, aren't they? Yeah, well, it's. It, I mean, it's a, you, you hit the nail on the head there, Tim, because uh, I think we, we looked at Uber, for example, and Uber didn't just solve one pain point. Yes, there was some big things they did, but they really tried, they looked at the entire customer journey and they tried to solve for them all. So it's not that, you know, you can see the car, the taxi approach or the driver approach, but they also solved, you know, simple billing they solved you know reliability with ratings which is the same thing we do with sendal you can actually rate your driver um they solved all these different pain points and and so back to 2014 and and a little bit of 2015 we didn't just take what we'd built um and make it into sendal we actually took a step back and we said what are all the pain points that a customer goes through as they want to send their parcel particularly if they're sending it by lining up at the post office Mm. um and we just you know, spent almost a year making sure we'd remove them all, you know, as many as we possibly could because for us that is the true sign of a, of a, of a beautiful solution when it's just frictionless from end to end. Love that. It does beg the question, James, who's looking after the kids? <laughs> uh, look, so I was I was still the primary carer until just last year, um, and now uh, we're doing a bit more sharing, which is which is fun. But you know, it is interesting. It's one of those things. Uh, you know, you can. My, my wife and I we talk a lot. I, I think there's there's a lot. The kids are very involved in this, you know, and excited about the journey as well. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's a whole family. Whenever you're in a small business, it's the whole family. That's on that journey together. What did you do with the um, the giving network? Did that kind of go by the by? Did you sell it? Does it still exist? Yeah, no, it was, it was really interesting. And and you know, I've uh, one of the, my biggest lessons in this entire journey has been about focus. Um, to be really honest, when we when we first uh, realised that there was an opportunity to to basically you know again australia post the other the other thing we saw is australia post is a monopoly it's a functional monopoly mm. in australia a lot of people don't even know that there is an alternative um but when we started to realize that we'd created a sendal out of the giving network um for a while there we were actually trying to run both and i think one of my biggest lessons was and and, and a friend of mine once told me this you know uh, if you try to chase two rabbits you don't catch either hmm. And I think for a little while there, we were trying to chase two rabbits. Um, and, you know, it meant that, you know, we'd split the team in two. But, of course, one bit of the team, Sendal, Sendal pretty much has been growing more than 15% a month for the last, uh, I think we're up to month number 40 now. Wow. You know, it just went crazy. And while the giving network was growing, it, was, it wasn't growing anything like that. And so, you know, you, you had one team that was, um, you know, wasn't growing as fast as the other, you know, changes it affects team role and so on i really just learned you can't chase two things at once you have to commit a hundred percent to one tell me a bit more about that because it was really heavy heart we had to shut down the giving network yeah okay because they often say one is a dangerous number in business you read that every now and then in these you know these harvard business type books but um (laughs) you know uh i guess you go on your your focus on on send all kind of led to the other thing i hear having interviewed so many successful business owners is that when they do shed everything else that they're focusing on and just focus on the one thing that's when the magic happens yeah absolutely i think for me it's you know it's again probably the big difference between a startup say and say a really big business you know really big business trying to spread its risk with a startup you're trying to be fast Mm. because if there's i think if there's one thing that kills startups it's time 
you know, you run out of time, which means you run out of money or you run out of enthusiasm or mm. a competitor catches up or somebody copies you, you know, whatever it might be. It's all about time. And, and so you, you think about what are the things that will speed me up and the best way of speeding up is focus. Yeah. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean blind focus. Right, you need to be constantly learning, and and you know, like we did, you know, we had one business that morphed into another one. That's fine, but I think if you don't focus, and and again, a lot of my lesson has been that, you know, how do you do that? If you don't focus, it'll slow you down, which means you don't have your biggest advantage, which is your speed. Having interviewed close to 500 successful business owners, I'm often asked, what traits do they have in common? Two that come to mind immediately are their deep respect for the power of marketing and their solid commitment to never, ever stop learning. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about an upcoming one-day marketing course being hosted by Authentic Education, which is a BRW Fast 100 company. Happening around Australia in June and July 2019, amongst other things, if you attend, you will discover six steps to nailing your Facebook ads, high converting copywriting techniques, a formula for writing email subject lines with ridiculous open rates, a simple $20 a month marketing hack that can generate multiples, you'll get some social media training and plenty more. So if the idea of getting a grip on your marketing appeals, and I know it does because you're listening to this show, then take a day out of your crazy schedule and go and learn something new to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. You can find all the details out about that course, that one day course over at authentic.com.au forward slash Timbo. That's authentic.com.au forward slash Timbo. Now, I'm guessing your business has many needs. Maybe you need extended cash flow to bring to life that genius marketing idea you've been sitting on for way too long. Or maybe you'd love a rewards points program that had you flying at the pointy end of the plane on the trip of a lifetime. Maybe you're just like a business tool that made running that beautiful business of yours just that little bit easier. Well, here's what I'd do after the show. Check out American Express's range of business cards designed specifically to help small business. Simply Google Amex Business to find out more. James, um, at what point, I'm sure it happened, did you get the cease and desist letter from Australia Post? Yeah, well, we did. (laughs) So it was was very interesting when when we were trying to think about how we would describe the send all service. Back in the very early days, you know, we, we, we'd settle on the name. We love, you know, simple, reliable, affordable Sendal. We think that sort of worked really well together. Mm-hmm. But how do you describe our service? And, and we actually came up with the, you know, the phrase post without the office Ooh. because it really is. It's the same. We, we think it's trying to be the same at post in terms of really the, the basics, which mm-hmm. is you can send to anywhere, you know, the parcel will get there. <laughs> but actually so much better. In terms of the things, you know, we'll do it free pickup, great customer support, um, simple pricing, all those things. So for us, Post without the office mm-hmm. was a great way to differentiate from Australia Post. Um, and then, as uh, as you said, the the interesting thing, and this is probably, uh, I think of it sometimes as a bit of, um, you know, it's one of the things you get in a, in a country that has a postal monopoly. Um, uh they we, we got the letter letter in the mail from from Ashurst lawyers, uh, which really was um, you know you can't use this phrase. We'd actually trademarked it, mm-hmm. um, and uh, they took us to court, bless them, mm. um, and tried to stop us from using the phrase "post without the office" with the argument that they own the word "post," which again we we argued that that wasn't correct because "post" is a general term that a lot of folk use. And you're using it a lot now in your marketing messages. So you must have won. <laughs> yeah, after two years, and, <laughs> and um, you know, in some ways, uh, it taught us, that taught us a lot as well. You know, we we went through a lot of soul searching because uh, you know it was expensive, um, but we figured, you know, small businesses, our customers, our small businesses stand up to big businesses every day, mm. and so if we didn't stand up to our big competitor, then we wouldn't be, you know being true to our purpose, which is to help small business thrive. And so we, we persevered and then we won. What were you fighting for? Was it the word, the, the ability to use the word post? 
No, it was it was the the, the trademark post without the office. It's a way of differentiate differentiating yeah, okay. from the post. Because I would have thought you could come up with another tagline, post without the office. But the fact that you want to use the word post throughout the life of Sendle would be is it really that's kind of the main the main point to your court case. It would have been expensive. Did you, did you have to pay the bills after all that, or were you kind of? Uh, look, I'm, I'm uh, again some of that's there, but I'm I'm pleased to say that there was. Um, but some of it back, but you never Good really get the time and the no, money back, no. the full amount. But at the same time, it just proved to us that we could stand up yeah. to a big postal monopoly. Um, we could, uh, again, I think the, you know, it sort of also meant that we wouldn't be pushed around. Um, and we really do believe that Australia deserves and, and small business deserves a, a, a really top-notch and, you know, legitimate competitor to Australia Post and to lining up at the post office. Absolutely. How much of a dint do you think you are making in that now? Uh, we, um, you know, with the, with the scale that we're now operating at, and, and to give you a sense of the scale, we I, I recently, because I'm, I'm a complete nerd, uh, I, I recently tried to calculate how far, if you put all the parcel deliveries <laughs> end-to-end, um, and we've, I've worked out we've, we've actually well passed Neptune. In fact, we've sent four light hours of parcels which is very, very exciting. That's, you are um, way too nerdy. I'm a total nerd. Yeah, that's uh, more than 30 times to the sun and back, basically. Um, so we've, uh, so we're, we're making it in, which is really exciting. We also believe we're facilitating over $200 million with the small business e-commerce every year in Australia. And these are small businesses who we think, you know, might not have otherwise been able to, in fact, we get this feedback from a lot of customers, you know, thank, without you, you know, my business wouldn't be able to survive because mm. I would. I the the shipping rates I was paying was crazy. Um, now I have an extra hour a day because I'm not lining up. You know, if you think about it, you know, you don't want to be spending your time doing parcel <laughs> delivery and chasing parcels and lining up. You want to be spending your time building your business. Mm. That's what small business should be doing. Well, to that point, uh, you spend a lot of time in beautiful design land from a point, you know, from user interface, the website user experience, your branding. Now, you could say, well, you're just a logistics company, so why are you doing that? Clearly, I mean, it's sort of a, <laughs> you know, I know why, but you, you do. I mean, t- tell me about how that comes about. What do what those meetings look like where you you cut to the chase and, and the, the, the experience of sending a parcel on Sendal, if, if you haven't done it, anyone listening, do it because it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah, actually, it's great. We, we actually, one of, our, one of our central things was, you know, turn, turn the concept of sending a parcel from a chore to a joy. You know, that was, that was one of our sort of mm-hmm. design parameters. How could you change it around? Um, I mean, it's, I don't know, you know, it's still, still something you have to do, but it is, yeah. you know, if you think about it, it's, particularly for small business, it is part of the, you know, you, you're, you're actually generating value for your business, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the biggest question and the biggest, the hardest part around all of that is choosing what not to do mm. because it's so easy. It's so easy to add things. Yes. You know, you think if only we'd just add that bit and if only we did that, then quickly you end up with, you know, what they say, a camel is a, is a horse created by committee or something, you know? It was, sorry, it's just, apologies to all camels out there. <laughs> yes. but, you know, you end up with a camel if you're not careful. And so for us, the hardest bit was to try to work out what not to include. Okay, so let's explore that because that is a great challenge of many, whether you're talking about writing copy, you know, um, presenting from stage, um, adding bits and bobs to a product or service. It is. It's really It's really easy, isn't it, to just, oh, we'll add that, we'll put that on. Yep. But it just becomes, a, a, you know, a, a useless thing. Um, h- how do you find the courage to kind of keep it so simple? Yeah, we have a, um, we have a couple of ways. I mean, one is we. You know, I think about the, you know, the app is like an exclusive party that everyone wants to, every feature wants to get in. So how do you... How do you really think how to be, you know, what's the bouncer mm-hmm. for that party? Um, <laughs> and we, we actually have a decision-making process, actually, in the business. Um, we, we, we think of it as, as hell yeah, we call it, which is that there's, there's actually three answers to every question. Most people think there's only two, which is like, you know, would you like a cup of coffee? You can say yes or no, right? But we actually think there's a third. There's, would you like a cup of coffee? You know, there's yes, there's no, and there's hell yeah. <laughs> and for us, it's that hell yeah, which is the, which is basically, you know, you have a really strong uh, belief and understanding. You know, it basically engages both your your thinking, 
and your emotional, your pattern matching sort of decision making processes. And so when when we try to make really big decisions, which is, you know, changing major features or adding something, we try to get to hell yeah. You know, is this something that eighty percent of our customers are gonna love? Oh, right? love and that. if it's not, then we start then we ask ourselves really hard questions. Well, is there an easier way to do it? Is there a simpler way to do it that we could get to that hell yeah? Oh, I love that. I've got actually that at the end of my sponsorship proposal for this for this podcast where, you know, I take them through the story of who listens to it and why they should sponsor it and all those various bits. And then the last page says, um, if it's a hell yeah, then give me a buzz. A hell yeah is a great phrase. Yeah. It's full of emotion and excitement. You know, it's better than a yes. Yeah. And it's, look, we use it for a lot of things. I mean, re- recruitment, um, for me, that's... Uh, you know, there's there's very there's not that many one way decisions in a business. If you think about it, there's, there's there's two types of decisions, right? There's there's reversible decisions, which is like, okay, I made a mistake, I can undo that, and I'll just try again. Mm-hmm. And a lot of decisions you can make are those things, right? That's that's the whole purpose of iterations, just trying to make reversible decisions, learn, roll it back if it didn't work, but you know, can keep improving. But then you got these irrever I think of them as largely irreversible decisions. They're one way decisions. Once you've made that decision, you know, who's going to be my first employee? You know, am I going to take investment from this company? Uh, which market are we going to pursue? When you do those, they're all sort of you, you sort of it's very hard to change, mm-hmm. almost or impossible to change. And so for me, you know, reversible decisions, make them as quickly as you can. You know, get eighty percent right. Like that's how you go fast. Mm -hmm. The irreversible, the really big decisions, and that includes, you know, launching a feature to customers. You don't launch it and then take it away. You have to get to hell yeah Mm. and take the time. So, you know, every single person who's ever joined Sendle, um, we have generally had four to five interviews and every single member of that company, every single person that's interviewed them has been hell yeah, we want this person to join the company. Because just a tepid yes is the wrong, you know, is, Mm. is, is the same as a no as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. No, I I love that. With so many options available to you, the successful small business owner, getting that beautiful business of yours found online can be confusing. That's why I suggest checking out how digital marketing agency Yellow can help do it for you. They can build you a website, optimize it for search engines, get you a funky social media campaign, list you in the best directory sites in Australia, plus they have a fantastic banner ad service that can get you 3.6 times higher click-throughs than the average display ad on some of the highest trafficked sites in the country. Who would want a bit of that? Find out more at yellow.com.au. So, James, um, what impact do you think, or what, what brand awareness do you think you have out there in the Australian small business community? Walk along the street, ask 100 people, do you know what Sendle is? How many are going to say yes? We, we haven't done that research yet, um, mm-hmm. so it's, it's very hard to hazard a guess. I, we do know, however, because folk tell us, is that, you know, we, we, we're still, um, we still don't have that general awareness. Mm. A lot of folk do not realise that there is a virgin to the Qantas. Or, That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. there's, a, there's an Optus to the Telstra. There is a Sendle to the Post. Mm. And, you know, that's and, – and, and I guess while we're still, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're on that journey, um, it's interesting more than half of our growth comes from word of mouth. Uh, folks just telling other folks to no use doubt. us, which I think is really lovely. And, and one of the things I do love about small business, small business talks to small business. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we've, you know, that's probably one of our big focus areas for, for this year is to how do we build the awareness of Sendle in and, the market and, and, and just the fact that there is an alternative out there that's leveling the playing field. So so what what do some of the marketing uh, initiatives that you take on in order to build that awareness? Because I don't imagine you've got millions of dollars to spend on, you know, big TV campaigns and probably nor would you want to in this fragmented day and age. But what, what are sort of the top three ways that you are building awareness besides word of mouth? And that word of mouth comes from offering a great experience. Yeah. And, and I think as, as part of that, you know, one of the other big lessons that we learned actually from the giving network to now Sendle. Um, other than focus was actually, well, I guess it's part of focus, but it was, you know, uh, choose a few channels, choose, choose, choose a few marketing mm-hmm. channels and just become really, really good at them. You know, mm-hmm. so from a marketing perspective, uh, you know, we know, you know I, I see again, and I, I was that person. I was, 
that founder with the Giving Network, I think I was pursuing like seven channels at once. We were doing a bit of social and a bit of con- content and a bit of community, a bit of viral, you know, a bit of PR, all that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've learned now just focus. And so for us, yeah, referral and viral is, you know, again, referral. Uh, we, word of mouth is great, but that's really about having an amazing product. Um, we we only started doing some digital uh, less than a year ago, actually, because the business was growing. But now we're trying to say, well, you know, and again, everything we try to do is customers in mind. You know, how do we talk about the fact that there is an alternative and what do customers really want? And then the other big one for us is partnership. Yeah. Um, we have, uh, you know, for example, if you're an Etsy seller, um, you can get free sendle premium. You can extra extra dollar. Not only is are we cheaper than post for our standard rate, but um, Etsy sellers will get an extra dollar. Um, eBay sellers will also get an extra dollar, um, a free central premium service. You can sort of search it up. Um, and, you know, and as in terms of discount, we go to partnerships because we believe we have real value to offer those communities. One of the things that you do from a, uh, at least from a customer experience point of view, which I find amazing that businesses do this, that you, it is so hard to find a phone number to call you guys. <laughs> and like, I know why you do it, but... What's the secret to ensuring that doesn't become a deterrent? Because some people just want to call the call centre and go, where's my parcel? Um, you, you have a great FAQ section. I mean, it's, it, the whole customer experience online does answer what you need to know. But has how do you get to that point of not putting a number out there? So, so for us, one of the biggest things, nobody really wants to sit on the phone and wait. For me, that's the worst experience. Um, and so... You know, one of the interesting things is, is we we believe, in, and if you have a look, one of the things that we've done that we we think is is really quite different to everyone is every single thing that we can do with a parcel, if that makes sense, whether it's redirect or chase a pickup or, um, you know, where's my parcel, launch an investigation, as we call it, mm-hmm. our customers can do that themselves without having to talk to anybody. Nice. We call it the Sendle Toolbox. So if you Google Sendle Toolbox, you can see every single thing you can do by pressing a button. And we think that's actually the, the real experience you want. Um, anyone who's used, you know, say an Uber or a lot of other services, you you can get help straight away. You don't what you don't need to even, mm-hmm. um, you know, go through that process. Now, of course, as part of that, then we might end up talking to you. Absolutely. There's, you know, that doesn't mean we. <clears throat> You don't make a phone call or we'll send you emails or whatever channel that you would like. But we think the best customer experience is you start and you say, you know, and it, of course it happens. It's, it's logistics. My parcel is late or I, you know, I can't find it. It was whatever it might be. It's generally it's, it was behind a pot plant or mm-hmm. something like that. You know, launch an investigation. You can press a button. That happens. The investigation pursues. We'll then get in contact well, then pay, you know, if, if it turns out that something happened, you can then claim insurance. That's awesome. But first, that's the journey that you want to be on. You don't want to be sitting and waiting on hold no. for 20 minutes to, and then trying to f- fumble around with parcel reference numbers and, you know, all that sort of things, you know. Yeah. James, you're four, Sindel's four years old now. Um, what's the size of the business? Can you give us some numbers, staff, turnover? What do you got besides being able to fly to Neptune, the amount of passes that you've delivered? <laughs> Look, we're, we're, we're in a really competitive space. I think our, uh, both our competitors and, and sometimes our partners would love to know uh, the turnover pieces. Ah. Um, but uh, So we don't disclose that, mm-hmm. I'm afraid. But, you know, we're up to, um, you know, I think from, you know, the, if we look at it, we've actually won the best career two years in a row now which I think is great mm-hmm. for um, uh, an upstart startup, um, <laughs> you know, and we can deliver anywhere in the world and we, we continue on the growth journey. So, How many staff you got? Uh, we're, we're almost at 100. Awesome. That's yeah. amazing. How does it make you feel four years down the track? Oh, look, I, it, daunting. <laughs> you know, it's lovely and daunting. It's, it's, you know, we're, getting, we're building a business that is – that is meaningful and impacting people's lives, but both both our customers, because again, we get so much lovely feedback from our customers about how we've helped save them time and money. But it's also when you're, you know, helping, you know, you're, you're helping steward a, a team uh, and people's careers, you know, it's a big responsibility. Mm. Mm. 
Well, James Chin Moody, it's a hell year from me. Well done, mate, on on building a great brand and may it continue well into the future and uh, may you even go as far as knocking off one of the big blokes not, yeah. in the not <laughs> too so distant much, future. Jim. Good on you. Thanks, James. Cheers. Thank you. Well, there you go, team. Sendall founder James Chin Moody. Seriously, next time you need to send something, give Sendall a crack. And even if you don't, head over to sendall.com.au and see what a solid user interface looks like because they are absolutely nailing it. By the way, James has kindly donated 10 $50 vouchers for me to give away to winners of the Monster Prize draw. So I'd suggest you enter that. If you don't know how, stay tuned because that's the next segment. But first, thanks to American Express, digital marketing agency Yellow, and Marketing Educators Authentic Education, here's what grabbed my attention from our chat with James. Attention grabber number one. I love how James uses extreme examples to get the point across of how good Sendal is. For example, you know, he says we can deliver a packet of Tim Tams to Everest Base Camp for just 10 bucks. That says everything. Or what about when he said, We've delivered four light years of parcels so far. I mean, that's geeky, but it's pretty clever. I don't know how far a light year is. Anyone? Does it actually have a measurement, a distance? I don't know. I don't get that, but it sounds impressive. So what's an extreme way you could describe the effectiveness of your business? Kind of interesting little exercise to go through. Attention grabber number two. I love how the Sendles team decision-making process is either a yes, a no, or a hell yeah. It's so it's good. We want hell yes in the business, right? Maybe add that to your decision making process. If something feels like a hell yeah, then like do it. Attention grabber number three. I love how they're constantly asking how can we make sending a parcel less of a chore and more of a joy in order to optimize their customers' experience. Mate, they're talking about sending parcels, but they're still also trying to figure out how they can make it a joyful experience. So if you're in a more interesting business than sending parcels, imagine how joyful you can make the experience for your customer. And I've got one more. Normally I have three attention grabbers. I've got four. I could probably have 10 from that interview. Attention grabber number four, choose fewer marketing channels and be really good at them. I've spoken about this previously. James is obviously doing it. Um, I've used podcasting for 10 years as my main marketing channel. It's been fantastic gets me a lot of speaking work at conferences and, and other things. And I just like the idea of focusing on a few things and doing them well, as does James. That's what grabbed my attention. I'd love to know what grabbed yours. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 459 and let me know. Come on down. It's Timbo's Monster Prize Draw. Oh, yes, indeedly doodly. It's time to reward another motivated listener for taking some swift marketing action. That's what we love. Today's winner is... <laughs> Fayuzi D'Agostini from Newlands Pizza Shop in Coburg, Victoria. And here is what Fayuzi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, has to say. Hi, Tim. Just wanted you to know how much I'm loving your podcast. Absolutely great information, and your passion for what you do is contagious. Thanks, Fayuzi. I just finished episode 452, all about how to get Elton John as a client. Steve Sims was both entertaining and shared a great amount of good information. He's good, isn't he, Fayuzi? He's one of my faves, just between you and I. Don't tell him. He's got big ego already. Here are two things I got in value that were really helpful and I could immediately apply from that episode. Firstly, Steve realized that to get anyone wanting to connect with him on an ongoing level, he had to provide value to that person first. Absolutely. Provide value first and then you'll get value back. Don't go looking for value straight away. This made me realize the importance of evaluating my own strengths and assets and determine how to use them to transfer value to others before I ask for what I want from them. Good learning there, Fayuzi. Secondly, he goes on to say, was his perseverance in staying the course before he could see the rewards. It is right what you said. Most entrepreneurs want to see their rewards coming in fast, whereas Steve just keeps on plowing along until the rewards inevitably show up because he 
continue to inevitably show up. You got it, Fayuzi. You have nailed it, my friend. He goes on to say, thank you for all you do. I have been benefited enormously from your podcast and your insights. Keep up the great work, mate. Fayuzi D'Agostini, Newlands Pizza in Coburg. If anyone's in that area or if you're going to Melbourne, I would suggest going and getting a meat lovers from Fayuzi because I reckon you do a very good meat lovers. Now, uh, for that, Fayuzi, you have won a lot of prizes. A $50 Sendal voucher, love that. A pass to the Amex Lounge at Melbourne or Sydney International Airport, that's worth 33 bucks. A voucher to buy some tradies underwear, 100 bucks worth. $50 worth of Santa Abel PJs. A Basin Essentials pack from Sayer Skincare, that's worth 79 bucks. Carmen's Muesli gift box, 60 bucks. A My DNA Test Kick, 99 bucks. $250 voucher to spend at Merchandise Company Be Promotive. Plus, I'm promoting you on this show. What's that worth? I don't know. And you get a backlink in the show notes to this show, which Google love. Well done, Fayuzi. Hey, everyone else, go ahead and enter. Tim at timreid.com.au is my email. And you just have to email me in 100 words or less, if you can, what idea you've taken from this show and how you've implemented it into your business to great effect. That's all I want to know. Tim at timreed.com.au. And if I read you your email out online, you win. Well, told you it was going to be a big show, and it was. It almost wraps up episode 459 of the award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Show. Thanks to digital marketing agency Yellow, Small Business Marketing Educators, Authentic Education. Get along to those one of those one-day courses. I think they will be good. And American Express. You can check out Yellow's suite of products over at yellow.com.au. You can register for Authentic's upcoming marketing training over at authentic.com.au forward slash Timbo. And you can check out Amex's sweet range of business cards over uh, at Google. Just search Amex Business. Next week, you and I are going to catch up with a fellow who's created a range of non-alcoholic spirits that are literally taking the world by storm. I have tried their non-alcoholic gin, and I can't say I got really drunk or anything because I didn't, but it tasted really nice. Uh, Don't forget there's an entire back catalogue of interviews over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. If you love the show, why wouldn't you run out on the street, you know, and just yell out, everyone listen to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. It's really good. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. You're not. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.